Now our next uh, panel of witnesses will be two very important gentlemen who with a great deal of experience. Mr. Robert Stuttman is a 25-year DEA veteran who has been in charge of DEA's New York office for the past four and a half years. He is a normally frank and outspoken person. He's testified before this committee uh, uh, at a hearing in New York City last summer. And uh, he has been the agent and in charge for New York for, as I said, four and a half years. And also uh, the chief of police of the Dallas Police Force, Mac Vines. He is also president of the Police Executive Research Forum. Uh, which includes major city police chiefs from, uh, from all around the country. As I said to you gentlemen earlier, I thank you for being willing to come today. I know the weather didn't accommodate you very well, and uh, hopefully, though, we can uh, uh, get you out of here before uh, uh, the flights that you are on are, are canceled, um, if that is good to be the case. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Why don't we begin with you, Bob, uh, Mr. Stutman? And, uh, hear what you have to say, and then we'll move the question. Thank you for oh, your thank you. Okay. Don't be silly. Good, good questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As always, it's a pleasure to appear before you, this time in Washington, as opposed to New York. I, I think Mayor Dinkins, uh, the newly elected mayor, very aptly summed up the problem in New York. If I could just take two or three minutes, because I don't have take a... as much time as you have. I, I, I don't have a prepared statement. Uh, but let me just very quickly, if I could, from my own personal point of view, sum up the problem that I see in New York, uh, what the results are uh, right now. Uh, first of all, I, I believe New York City probably suffers from the worst drug problem of any city in the United States. Uh, according to their own figures, there are prop about 250,000 heroin addicts in New York and between four and 600,000 cocaine addicts in New York City. Uh, Is that Two distinct categories? Yes, today. sir. Two completely separate categories. Uh, according to a very highly respected, recently completed uh, study done by a nonprofit private foundation, there may be as many as 125,000 addicts in New York City between the ages of 12 and 17. Uh, that's where we are as far as addiction goes. Uh, the problems that it has caused, I think the mayor very aptly summed up. Violence on the streets. Uh, I have lived in New York for four and a half years, as you said in your statement, sir, and I can tell you in the four and a half years I have lived there, I have seen a change in the tone, the texture, and the face of New York. And all of that change is due, in my opinion, to drugs, specifically cocaine and crack. It has changed the feel of the city. Uh, there is nowhere in New York uh, where you can't buy drugs, whether it be on Wall Street, uh, Madison Avenue, Fashion Avenue, or the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side. And there are very few places in New York where you can feel safe from the effects of drugs. I think the mayor very aptly summed that up. There are two problems, however, that I'd very quickly like to point out that I don't believe have received the proper public, uh, public uh, uh, scrutiny that I believe are a direct result of, of the drug problem. Uh, one is, I think, the ultimate victims of the drug problem that you and I are talking about today may not even be you and I. I think there are kids. And I believe they are our kids for two reasons, one of which Mayor Dinkins, I believe, or may have been yourself, commented on. Uh, according to Dr. Bennett, there will be about, be about 300,000 cocaine-addicted babies born in the United States this year, a significant percentage of those in New York, and also a very high percentage of AIDS. Oh, did you say 300? Yes, sir. That's what I said. Also, approximately uh, a significant number of HIV-positive babies born in New York City. Now, what's interesting, although we very often argue about needle sharing and the problems of, uh, of addiction and HIV-positive babies, what we are now finding in New York City, I believe, that is a significant percentage of those babies are not the children of heroin-using mothers, but crack-using mothers, and that's tied directly to the promiscuous sex that's involved with crack use, specifically around crack houses. Uh, we're also looking at kids. I think the one area that we tend to overlook is the area of child abuse. I believe the horrendous child abuse numbers we are seeing in New York City, again, are directly tied to the use of cocaine and crack. Last year in New York City, 73% of the children who were beaten to death were the children of substance abusing parents. And according to the people who keep those figures, the majority of those parents were cocaine users. Uh, 
the number of battering kids who were reported to the authorities in New York City went from 1986 to 1988 from about 2,500 to about 8,600. Most of those kids, the children of substance abusing parents, and most of that substance abuse happened to be cocaine. Uh, there is a case that I know you have heard of in New York called the Lisa Steinberg case. It was played, frankly, by the media as a horrible example of child abuse. I think the media completely misplayed that case. I think that was a classic textbook example of what happens to otherwise bright upper middle class people who start smoking cocaine and how that smoking cocaine so changes them emotionally and psychologically that over a period of time they beat a child to death. Uh, I think that is one of the end results of cocaine that we are not seeing quite as publicly. Uh, we don't see people beaten on the streets, we don't see the muggings, but those kids I believe are the ultimate sufferers of the problem we're dealing with. The second issue that has to do with cocaine and drugs in New York that I think is a vast change and one that we have not talked about very much but I believe if one were to prognosticate two to three years from now is going to make the biggest difference and that is very simply we are seeing in New York the femalization of drug addiction. That is a complete change from what we have seen in the past. Uh, for the past 20 years in New York, drug addiction has been basically a male dominated problem. Almost 80 percent of our heroin addicts were male. What we are now finding is at least 50 percent of our cocaine and crack addicts are female. Now that means unfortunately in the inner city, which is what the subject is of this hearing today, or urban areas, as you know better than I do, Mr. Chairman, uh, most families in inner cities are matriarchal in nature. Because a significant percentage of those heads of families are now becoming drug addicts, we are losing the last vestiges of family life in the inner city. And in fact, the New York Times about four months ago did an excellent piece on how grandmothers are now taking over families in the inner cities because the mothers are the addicts. I believe that two or three years from now, Mr. Chairman, that femalization of drug addiction is going to have a more significant long-term effect on the cities we're talking about than even the violence on the streets today. And I believe that's an issue we must look at. The bottom line is a city like New York, which I am here talking about today, is suffering tremendously. I believe the progno prognosis is nothing but bad for the future unless we are ready to bite the bullet and look for some serious long-term answers uh, to a very, very complex problem and get working on it very quickly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.